Yo, 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 what is up, you lovely people? Glad to have you back for part 5 of the Killer Frequency. I gotta start checking beforehand. Um, so, not gonna lie, I have a few spoilers, because I got 14 minutes in, then realized I muted my fucking microphone, which isn't muted now, right? No. Good. Camera's recording? Alright, there we go. So I know what happens, like, 14 minutes into the future. It's not a ton. It doesn't tie too much together, at least not stuff we already knew. A bit of a recap last time, we went down to the murder basement twice, willingly. Um, and actually, I think more than that, because we drug up a whole, like, cork board. So, that probably took like one or two trips to drag everything with it. Um, then we went back down there again. Went on a scavenger hunt for tapes that Clive hit around. We think that Clive is dead. We assumed he was the Whistling Man, but it turns out he wasn't. He was working against the Whistling Man, trying to save the few people who were still alive, because apparently people in even other towns died because of this. It seems to all be related to a boy named George Barrow's murder. Um, it was made to look like an accident, like he got drunk, fell in the reservoir, hit his head, and drowned. But... That was all lies from the corner to cover it up. So let's check out where we go in there. From there. Sorry. I'm a little out of it because of the God, you're back, mic. Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Why are we keeping a show going? We... People are dying. <laughs> Shouldn't we just be like, hey, there's a killer on the loose, stay home, then play music for the rest of the night? Like, come on, maybe every once in a while, it'd be like, hey, remember, killer, don't leave. Like, I don't know why we are still doing a show. It fucking beats, beats me. me. But we gotta do it, and we're going to. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. I'm still okay, prepared. Forrest. Shut the music off. I'm paranoid. I'm still not. Hello again, Gallows My mic's still muted. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Fremen Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? Plunker. What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. I like Plunker. Plunker. What are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. Oh, it's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. That was quick. I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. I'd be jumpy too. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. Sure. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. Uh. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Clive. Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. There's only one Clive Forrest, in this town? Please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man. Oh, yeah. Forrest. 
We also found out we think he died, so he's probably not. I don't know if I mentioned that in the little recap, recap I did before. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't gotta worry I about don't that. Know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. You already knew that. I threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Oh, he was anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. So we found at the. She's at her jazz studio. He was at the. The body was found at the reservoir. The jazz studio is here. I guess that does uh -huh. line up. Forest, you're through. Hello, this is oh. Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's for Snash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. That sounds nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Ah, uh, you got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Superhuman cardio. He's fast. He didn't chase after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. Maybe it's not people one person. Who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. You. What? So in my recap, I also didn't mention this. On the police report, it says that she found the body. What do you mean you don't know anything about it? This is past the point I got. Uh, when I said I was 14 minutes in, that was how long the recording was going, and I kind of just stood around for a lot of that. Reorganized the map. But, 
You found the body! It was on the police report. Unless that's a lie, I guess. The lies they tell so far, Virginia and Sandra, aren't great. Like, Virginia was like, uh... Oh, what the fuck did she say? The lies to get out of it was like, Oh, I don't know why I said Clive. I was in a panic state. I would have said anything. And it's like, she specifically said, Oh my god, Clive, it's you. Please don't kill me, I'm sorry. Like, I think that was the gist of it. She was terrified for her life and asking Clive not to murder her. Which, you know, a bit specific for just a random thing she blurted out in a panic. And then Sandra's just like, I don't know anything about that. I found the body, but uh, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, you found the body. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? You found the body. <laughs> you found the body. We have the police report. It says here you found it. I don't know what you mean. I got no idea. <laughs> Can't help you. Also, people are dead. Kind of time to be keeping secrets, I don't think. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. I don't. I just kept going up. He said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet, and everything would be okay. Of course. Thing is, I was warned not to be too stern, but I don't know what the written prompts. Unlike the excellent joke, it's kind of hard to judge the intensity I'm going to be saying with it. But... Yeah, who was he? The fucking landlord? Who owns that? Uh... Wait a second. The waste disposal plant burned down. Where did this all happen? I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, I guess no, that doesn't work. So I have a couple of theories. My main one is that it's the politician, like the dude who called earlier. Or maybe his opponent. Maybe he's the... Actually not the bad politician. There's a... Well, he's still a dick, regardless of if he's the murderer. But like, you know... The guy who called in... Saying a bunch of shit about his re-election. Uh... Because whoever's doing it is pretty powerful. They got Sheriff Matthews to lie. They got... Um, the coroner to lie. They got... Uh, what else did they do? Got Sandra to lie by raising the rent on her jazz studio. He's got to be pretty powerful. I think it's a politician. Or it could be like a twist where it's Clive. Still, like he didn't die. Honestly, it could be anybody. Hell, it could be the guy, Reggie, who we're told is, like, running this... Who owns this studio? Maybe he owns the fucking jazzercise place, too. I don't know. The politician's my best bet. I was... Tr Do any of the names match up with any of these red circled names here? Like, maybe one of them was, like, his kid. They accidentally killed the uh, boy, George. And so he helped him cover it up. But who would that be? It wasn't Chuck Brody, because he was almost killed. Uh. Ooh. I guess it could be... Was the guy's last name Williams? Because if so, that kind of makes sense, because... Where is it? Uh... Two years investigation, the festival accident has concluded. The investigators blame two engineers that were contracted and contracted in from the local power station. Lead engineer Ant Williams and junior engineer Sean Everett. Were, was it either of those two names? Were that, was that the politician's last name? 
because it also says, despite the fact they, it was a massive tragedy in the town that killed people, it says they've been ordered to do community community service instead of just like, you know, jail. That's a pretty light sentence. So, I don't know. I'm kind of just mumbling now. I think it's the politician. I'm blaming him. Oh, I, Sandra's still on the line. I kind of just wandered off, didn't I? Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. Still well, helped. I'm saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river. Oh. Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great for us. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on... That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. So, she said she found him in the river instead of the reservoir. Isn't that where the murderer, the whistling man, was also thrown into? Shut up, Peggy. I'm thinking stuff out. That is where he fell in at whistling point. I imagine... There's no, like, table of context out in here. Is this, like, a walking trail or something? I don't know why it would lead to the waste disposal site. Maybe it's not. But if it is... We have a caller. Oh, my God, Peggy. Then she would probably find him. There's, like, three main paths she could have taken if this is a path, which I don't think it is anymore. I think it's like a sewer system for the waste disposal site. She either found him at Deerfall or Whistling Point. Oh my god, I'll pick it up. But if it was Whistling Point, then that's where the murderer fell in. I don't know. It. I don't know. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. With me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening. Fuck off, Ponty. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. This is Ponty's again. His last impression was very good. I actually didn't realize it was him. But this is just him. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Is it Ponty's? He's my Uncle Ronnie. His Pepperoni. first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, could you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god, damn it! <laughs> yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Start hanging just- You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! Sorry, Forrest. <coughs> Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. I told you it was- fuck- I mean, it was so obvious. She didn't even really do a voice that time. <laughs> it's still pretty funny, though. This is 16 <laughs> The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. Is that Clive? Caller. <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always Son of a hard. bitch. Get the fuck off the air. Forrest? Forrest? Are you okay? Whistling man, if you're out there, go kill Ponty for me. Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? No, that's pretty good. Sorry. That's Sorry. fair. That was... That was too much. No, it wasn't. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. That was pretty Don't good. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. With how much Ponty's been calling, I really hope that the next time he calls, it's like, "Help! The whistling man is outside my pizza place. Save me!" Oh, really? What pizza place call is it? Waiting. Better take it. They might need our help. Ponty's Pizza. He like does the advertising thing again, and then it's just like, "No, but really, I need help." He's he's outside. Oops. 
don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm, moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Fuck off, Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. He's outside. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Did you call the radio? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Starling 4000. User manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Ask a neighbor for help? Um... Entry code. I have the entry code if Can you want. a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. Well, I got the entry code. I need that code to get inside. 715914. Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. What side? Shit. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. What side? I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... I got it. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's All right. a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. <sighs> we'll see what we can do. See, I have it. Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I wish I could I'll just. Sit out of sight. We should just call her like her real name, all right, Maisie. Folks, here's a little tune for you all to enjoy, while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Hey, here she is, drama in theater. So what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Music. You'll like this next song. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Is she not actually at her apartment? Is okay, she at... So she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere... Clive probably has the papers for the Starlink 4000. I already got it, but is she like outside another building and she's asking us to get her in? Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starlink 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. It seems like a Good. security risk. And did you risk. find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, what do you mean? Peggy. Was there something else? When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Like that? Is that something else? You're making me paranoid, Peggy. Is there something else I was supposed to get? Hang on a second. 
Can I still leave? I'm going back to the basement to see if anything changed. Sorry guys, I don't I know you probably don't want to see me just wander down there again. But Peggy just made me really paranoid with that. I'm going to keep that door pried. Sorry, I'm paranoid to see if I'm still going to be muted. The killer is very fast. Confused why why Clive even bothered to help. I mean, he helped him cover up a murder. Like, how many years ago was it? Actually, probably wasn't that long. All things considered, you know, for a murder. I'm gonna go back in here and explore some more. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? I don't think there would be anything else. I mean, what else do we need other than the fucking owner manual? Unless that dog's gonna be a fucking problem. Mm. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I really hope this is all we need. Done. Are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Wait, hang on. When entering codes and commands, sequ sequentially key depressions must be made within four to five seconds of one another. Without a key depression, the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from its beginning. Make a mistake while entering security code, stop, press the pound, and then start over. If you stop in the middle while entering a code and then immediately start the entry... Start the entry over, an erroneous code might be entered. Our state-of-the-art security uses a six-digit code system. Simply enter the code. Starting system... Starting alarm system 4000 comes with a range of features, the default codes for the following. Please change these codes immediately to prevent unwanted entry. Let's hope they didn't do that then. Entry code? The code is 715914. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> Forrest, what did we do? I told you she was up to no good shit. I don't know, actually. I guess we'll find out. Forrest, there's another call coming in. Evening, caller. You're live on... Oh! Oh! Forrest! Oh! The psycho's somewhere in the roller rink, dude. I just saw a shadow. God damn. Fight him. Oh. You gotta help me, man. Forrest. Make sheep. No. Come back. I can't fight my rifle, man. It's... I don't want to hurt anybody, but I can't let anything happen to... <laughs> Maxie! No, Maxie, no. We gotta kill Don now. Fuck you, Maisie. Again, Forrest. 
Oh God, poor Ricky. What the fuck? Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. What process? We know what happened. We let the murder in. Also, how the fuck was I supposed? I mean, I kind of thought Dawn was suspicious, but then she said I was out investigating a lead, and I was like, oh shit. That makes sense. She's an investigator. That's how she knew about everything. How was I supposed to? Dead well, air is a crime, Forrest. Fuck off. Murder's a crime, and we just helped commit it. <sighs> so, the whistling man is a woman? I didn't believe it. I mean, I didn't think it necessarily had to be a man. I kind of figured it was more likely because, you know, I guess I figured somebody who was staring at her, like, you know, looked at the cameras, like with the reporter or somebody who just saw her would figure, oh, you know, that's her. Oh my God, that was the signs. The, when we heard from little Ricky, the train was going off. Um, and he was like, oh yeah, he loves the trains, he always does the call, and then he did the call, and then he was also like, oh, put on something funky, it'll be in me and Max's last dance. Oh my god, how was I supposed, to oh, I guess I was supposed to play this in one big chunk. Oh no, little Ricky, I really liked him. And Max. You gotta kill Dawn now. I mean... You know, the reporter and that weird dude who challenged the murderer to a fight. I guess that's whatever. At least we know who it is. It's Maisie Campbell, for sure. She played Dawn. Drama and theater matches up. But why? Hmm. Also, so I know the warnings and everything that we heard, but, I mean, what was I supposed to do? Give her the alarm test warning? I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. How the fuck was I supposed to know? How did you not know? This is a small town. You didn't notice the strange, slow-talking woman? Like, oh, hi, Forrest. All night? You didn't pick up on that? You're the local. I got here a week ago. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that song? Also, was she like... What do you mean, oh, is that right, Sherlock? She called us and told us to go play your song. And we were like, sorry, we can't. We threw it outside. And she's like, no, you should go and get it. And then that sequence of events led to us finding the murder basement with the cork board. Of course something wasn't right. She also just talked weird. I mean... Maybe she actually wanted it. Oh, fuck. Could be her favorite No, that's not what song. I thought. Ugh, that's awful. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music, and you can make the announcement. Don't say kill. We just murdered okay, a rookie. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey, folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks She didn't him. manipulate him. We let her in. Don't trust no one. Just don't trust Dawn. Maisie Campbell. We know who it is. I know who it is. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. Actually, maybe we shouldn't. The killer was calling themselves... Dawn. Maisie Cartwright? Oh, maybe it wasn't Campbell. Mary Campbell. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on Close the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? 
It's 911. Oh, wait. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Wait. I don't think it's either of them. I mean, I think... Uh, where is the camp? Caller on line one. Mary... So it's Mary Campbell, who is the person up there, is Anne. Maisie Cartwright is Don. There's no one named Cartwright in here. Shit, well there goes that theory. Fuck. We have a call waiting. I'm not familiar with the play of uh, Humpty Dumpty. Or is like Anne the second uh, lady? Like is Dawn the leading lady? Leading lady. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Somebody's been stabbed? Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Oh, well, yep. Just started freaking out. That's fair. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person. How did she get here so fast? I stabbed him. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. But where? I waited until they were gone. Then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left... Yep, there's the prank. Please, he needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. Yeah, You should what? get all the info you can. Why I'm still confused why it was exploded. Why it was exploded? Where's he hurt? Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. He's dead. And then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground. And He's dead. Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. Don't pull that What's out. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can. Oh. No, I just got a man killed. I can't. I've killed so many people. I mean, I think I've saved more than I've killed, but that's just because a bunch of dun dumb teens escaped together. And even one of them died, but that was Jimmy. Fuck Jimmy. <laughs> then after this, I'm probably gonna... Well, hang on. Nope, fuck. Shit. Oh god, I'm fucking up everything. Oh no. Alright, yeah. We don't have much choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. A 
apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. I knew that. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. I wouldn't have thought about securing it. God, I didn't know that first info. part. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Oh, I was about to say, that's actually pretty easy, considering the whole basement scavenger hunt we went on. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> Alright, uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm. What do you mean if it's calm. safe, though? This what is, is safe mean? Really sorry. He's been stabbed. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. You don't have like an off. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. You don't have a doctor I can call an off like oh. call. Oh, Forrest, are you there? I'm here. How is Jason doing? He's Badly. dead. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left, but he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's pull it out. Be hell. Should I pull it out? Yes, and make sure to twist it when you do. We want it uh, to come out as clean as possible. Don't touch the no, knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. Don't. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. I forgot which step was secure the knife. His stomach is worse. Secure the knife. Stomach takes priority right now, right? But they didn't say anything about leaving the knife alone. They said don't remove it. They said apply pressure next. Alright, I, I think we need to leave that knife alone. Alright. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Yeah. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on, and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Fuck you. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Yeah. Peggy? Hello? What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. Fuck Dawn. other people need us? You got a second line. You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. You take the calls exactly. in. I'll do this. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She can't drive. Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here... KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? 
I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. They will. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. What now? Naturally. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. I'll throw it out the window. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. It's 1987. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel <sighs> files. That's good to know. Don't you at least keep Since a we paper one? Heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. He's dead. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. Let me out. Oh, I should probably play some music. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Wait, Reggie's office is downstairs in the office? That's not opening. I... His office is downstairs. I guess I don't know where else I, it would be. Hey, by the way, don't we have the same security system as Roller Ricky? He's gonna... John's gonna come here and kill us. I mean, not that she has to use the security code. We left the basement open. And I'm going down here right now. Is this the office? I guess so. Man leaves his light on all night. Looks like I need a four-digit code. We do? Axe forever, need to write pitch. Document, good title. Bring back original protagonist villain. Certification is verified that Reginald Scott has successfully completed the standard course in first aid to the injured. Why don't I just call Reginald? Reggie. Well, he probably doesn't live around there, does he? He's a bigwig. Uh, alien sightings. Do not tape over. So he's a big UFO fan. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? No. Oh. I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries, we still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I'd recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. That's fair. Fuck Clive. Nah, he's cool, I guess. Chalupa Cabras. Buenos Dias. Fuck, it's a floppy disk. Could this be it? Nope, these are just his murder theory, murder video things. Ask Jenny where those tapes are, it's been weeks now. Let's probably check the back, huh? Nope, nothing. Nope, nothing. And I ain't found shit. Why would he keep post-it notes to a safe he has? 
keys for very important date and it's six digits four digits should have figured thirteen oh eight it's a date thirteen oh eight I'll try it nope nope that's not working must be something else Eighteen ten. Nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Nineteen eighty seven? I know that's the year. Fuck, that's not right. Very important date does not help. Mm. He's got a best boss mug. Fucking Michael Scott. Is it one of his tapes? Could this be it? Eleven oh seven. Whoopsies. How do I leave? I guess I should have figured it'd be on there. Oh, personal fire, file. What the fuck is this bastard saying about me? Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. You're right, I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. Relationship of sorts pretty quickly, which is good because we sure don't have the show budget to pair him with Karen. Peggy, I'm looking at her shit. I know that she didn't go there either. I really hope this doesn't get him killed because I looked at him. Hey, Peggy, I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can't. Don't waste time. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. Yeah. Why? I was kind of worried about that, but you put him in front of me, I'm gonna. So it's Karen. We know she didn't. John Hedges. Carter, sadly. It's one of these three, then. Because we know that Karen didn't, and I don't really give a shit enough to read her. What is that? <laughs> she wasn't nothing about her attending. Nobody's gonna nobody went there, right? That's gonna be it. It's going to be like just him. Also, there was that thudding noise. I'm scared. 
I'm terrified. Help me. Fourteen Nancy Drive. He's a war medic. A bunch of medical equipment at home from the military. What's his name? John Hedges? We're calling John Hedges then. And I'm not locking any of his shit. I'm gonna get murdered in here, aren't I? I heard the thud. Did Peggy black out? What the fuck was that? He's dead. What? Did I have to call him from downstairs? Why? Fuck the intercom. Really hope he's not dead. He's probably dead. Oh, they don't know what the thudding was. Was that in-game or was that my dog upstairs, actually? I'm starting to second guess. Hey, Peggy, you there? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Alright, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please, head off! Shut up, Casey. Casey. I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale! Ooh, shock. I tried to give him the rest, but he just threw up everywhere! Shock. What's happening? What do I do? Ooh, what do... God, it sounds like he's what going to shock. What do I do? Shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Oh! Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry! Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I... I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. That's actually good! What did the nurse say to do about shock? Uh, elevate his legs, not his wounds. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. I don't know how you would elevate his stomach. Blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it! We didn't secure the knife. Okay. I brought his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. Is it queen? I'll wrap him in some blankets. Just give me a second. Wait, no, the queen. Uh, clean. Jason is going to be fine. He's dead. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay. Cut okay. off his leg. Okay. John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. Alright. What's his number? Uh, five, four, two, that zero, seven, have to say it. three, five. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or... Never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? 
He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? He's dead. What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. No. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. John Hester. I'm here about Jason. Please let me in. Let him in. No. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't need to worry. We got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. <sighs> and with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Jason? Well, after all that excitement... I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. All right. Uh, I'm gonna end it there. Thanks for joining me on this one. Uh, I'll be back playing some more later. I do have to say, Jason's not very bright because he heard the whistling, told her to hide, and then just went and met with her, with the whistling man dressed up as the whistling man, like. In full costume. Didn't have to trick him or anything. Man literally walked up there like, what are you going to do, stab me? And then got stabbed. <laughs> Jesus. What kind of move was that? I mean, the girl hid in the bushes. Why didn't he? All right. Uh, anyways, thanks for joining me. It's great having you. If you like the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. I already said that. God damn it. Motherfucker. And see you later. Hope you have a great day.